seated. Good morning. I'm Pastor Jeremy. It's great to see everyone here. Happy Independence Day as we celebrate our independence as a nation and the privilege that we can come here and worship as we please and the freedoms that we so cherish so much. In your pews, you have a few things in there. One of them is a connection card. If you're worshiping with us for the first time or a guest worshiper, or if you have updated information, we ask that you please fill that card out and you can put it in the offering plates in the back. On the back of that card is a prayer card. If you have a prayer of concern or a prayer of thanksgiving, again, you can fill that out, put it in the offering plate in the back, and we have a whole group of people that want to and will pray for you. Well, let's continue to sing songs to our Lord and Savior today and give God all praise and honor, which God richly deserves. Let's stand and sing together.
morning, church. Happy Fourth of July. Could you pray with me? Father God, thank you. Thank you for the sun. Thank you for the rain that's about to come. Thank you for the good days and the bad days. Thank you for this country. Thank you so much for the freedom to be able to worship you publicly. We love you so much, Lord. And as we stand here broken in front of you, please, we beg, we yearn for you to open our eyes so that we can see you, open our ears to hear you, and open our hearts and turn us towards you. We love you, Lord, and we ask all this in your name. Amen. Everyone go ahead and take a seat, for real, this time. And we're going to go ahead and uh, move on with the children's sermon. Good morning, everybody. I want to teach us a song, but before I do that, in fact, most of you may know this song, but this is a song that I learned as a kid, so I want to teach the kids who are watching via video and Jackson, I see you back there. Um, yeah, uh, but it has to do with this thing that, um, that is kind of hard for us because God doesn't really love human inventions. Um, I didn't do that, by the way. I'm good, but I'm not that good. That's the computer plugged in that's doing that, I think. Um, yeah, uh, anyway, um, yeah, God doesn't love human inventions. God, I think, gets delight in watching us have fun with them, you know? Uh, like, I think God gets a kick out of the fact that, that I'm into electric cars. God th says, oh, isn't that cute? He's into electric cars, you know? Um, but God, God doesn't care about electric cars. God doesn't care about things a human invent, uh, including things like nation states, you know? God um, doesn't care about Russia or China or America or anything like that. That's a human invention. God doesn't care about how we govern ourselves. What God cares about is people. And what God blesses is when people do the right thing. And so um, I think, frankly, uh, one of the things God loves about America is that we are so diverse. Because God loves diversity. All you got to do is walk outside and you can see that, right? There's not just one kind of tree. Am I right about that? I mean, there is, you can't even count how many trees there are. There's not one kind of bug, sadly. <laughs> There's an uncounted number of bugs. I mean, God just loves diversity. And I could be wrong about this, but I don't think I am. I think America is the most diverse country in the world. You know, it's, it's all about diversity. From the very beginning, I'm going to terribly misquote this, but uh, America is the one that says, send us everybody. You know, we, everybody's welcome here. You don't have to be German. You don't have to be, you know, Czechoslovakian. You don't have to be anything in particular. Uh, we, we welcome all people here, all kinds of people. Um, and I think God loves that. God blesses that. And so um, I want to sing a song about that. It goes like this. Maybe you remember it from when you were a little kid. And Jackson, maybe you haven't heard it before, but maybe you have. It goes like this. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. I can tell some of you know this one. Yeah. Um, I think God blesses and loves the fact that um, this is a country where it doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what the color of your skin is. It doesn't matter how much money you have. Um, you can still be an American. I think that's something that uh, Jesus loves. So let's sing that song one more time. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Amen.
morning. Hear God's word from 2 Corinthians. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast. But on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth, but I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. Word of God, word of life. Please rise as we sing gospel acclamation for the day.
powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name. Stay standing and ready your hearts for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown. And his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two. And gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in their belts. But to wear sandals and to not put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed all, to all, that they should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed many who were sick and cured them. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Lutherans have a reputation for not liking change. And it's (laughs) well-deserved, mostly. Uh, Y'all are a good example. Uh, So am I. Uh, We could do a seating chart, you know. (laughs) Right? We all all like to be where we like to be. And I know uh, us uh, contemporary service folks kind of uh, look at the traditional service folks and say, you know, I, I, don't, I can't do that service because they do the same thing every week. We kind of do too, you know. We do it in our own way, but we kind of do the same thing every week. Yeah, we Lutherans don't like change much. It's true. Um, and I would argue that human beings don't like change all that much. We just, you know, we come by it honestly, we Lutherans. Uh, human beings, we kind of like, we, we like some variety, but we kind of like to get into our routines, don't we? I mean, chaos gets tiring after a while, doesn't it? We kind of like our routines. And I think um, this is one of the reasons why uh, when Jesus was walking on the earth, his ministry annoyed the religious leaders so much. Because he was talking change. He was preaching change. And um, not just a little bit of change. The word he used over and over again, in fact, the word that he sent his disciples out with was repent. That's not minor course correction. 
That's big change. Little Bible trivia here. Anybody remember what the word repent literally means? 180 degrees. That's exactly right. So we're not talking about, oh, you're a little to the left there. No. Uh, or a little to the right there. No. Uh, it's <laughs> head in the opposite direction. Can you imagine how the religious leaders felt in Jesus' day uh, when he came and he sent his disciples out to say, y'all are leading the people in exactly the wrong direction. Can you imagine how they felt? I can. <laughs> As a religious leader, if somebody walked in here and said, Pastor Dave, you're leading your people in, a, in 180 degrees the wrong direction. Y'all need to turn around, heading the wrong way. That's not an easy message to hear. It's no wonder that Jesus uh, got into some scuffles with those folks. Um, repentance, it's a tough thing. And yet, if you look through the New Testament, um, I mean, it's no wonder his hometown people were a little miffed at him. Uh, it's no wonder the religious leaders were a little bit of a, upset with him. And, and if you look through the New Testament, the hard news, there's a lot of good news in there, but the hard news for us is Jesus is sending us out too. It's not just his disciples. Here in this text, it is. He sends his disciples out to proclaim repentance to everybody. Um, but all through the Gospels in the New Testament, Jesus, in the end, uh, in Matthew chapter 28, uh, after he has died for us, freed us from sin, um, given us the promise of eternal life, then he turns to us and says, um, Go. Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them uh, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything that I've commanded you. In other words, repentance. Go, all of you go and proclaim repentance out there. That's serious change. That's hard. And there's two reasons why it's hard. And I don't want you to feel in, in any way like I'm preaching at you, because this is just as hard for me. Uh, there's two reasons that, as I was wrestling with this text for this week, that I thought, this is so hard for us. One is, um, we don't come here to be sent. That's not why we come. That's not why we're a part of the church. We come here because we need to be fed. We come here because we're tired. We come here because we are uh, dealing with the world out there all week long. We need encouragement. We need to be lifted up. We need, we, we need to receive uh, from the Lord, and I hope we do. We don't come here to be sent. That's not why we're a part of the church. So what this being sent thing is difficult. Um, and then there's another even harder part about being sent, uh, which I suppose has always been true, but I think it's especially true in this day and age. And that is, uh, if we listen to what Jesus said, he said, um, teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And here's the problem. We've taken a really good chunk of what Jesus has taught, and we've kind of just set it aside. The stuff we don't like, the stuff that's challenging, the stuff that we don't really, we just kind of set it aside. And we have surrounded ourselves, and it's so easy nowadays. Uh, nowadays, uh, with the internet and streaming and cable TV and everything else, uh, we have surrounded ourselves and filled our minds and our hearts with teachers who are telling us stuff that fits better. It fits our lifestyle better. It fits our politics better. It fits uh, what we feel like doing better than what Jesus teaches. And so we have uh, we've taken the teachings of Jesus that we like, that make us feel good, that uh, give us the promises we want and all of that. We, we Hang on to that, uh, but we kind of set the rest aside and fill in its place the, the people who are saying what we want to hear. And so when Jesus says, go and teach them to obey everything that I've commanded you, go out there and tell people, you know, following Jesus is really better. 
Following what Jesus teaches is really the, the most blessed life you can have. Uh, it's very hard to say that, and it kind of annoys people, when we're clearly not doing it. Um, so we have a problem. We don't want to be sent, uh, and we've kind of set aside a lot of what Jesus has taught. And so when Jesus says to us, go, I'm sending you out. What we say, we don't say this out loud, we kind of keep it to ourselves, but all you have to do is follow us around for a while, and you know it's what we're saying. Uh, we're saying, no, thank you anyway. <laughs> Not going to do it. Hard pass on that, Lord. Um, just, no, not going to do it. And on this 4th of July, this puts um, everything in a very difficult place. I think it puts our nation in a difficult place. Because uh, what we desperately need um, as God's people is to dig back into this word, to dig back into the teaching of Jesus and realize the stuff we've set aside is just as important. It's the truth. It's coming from the Son of God. And the stuff we've replaced it with is not. And we need to fully take up what Jesus has taught. And we need to, we need to bring it out with us into everything that we do, into our decisions, into our speech, into our whole involvement in this nation. Because what the, uh, what the United States of America needs right now is God's people to be proclaiming truth, to be bringing the truth of the word to all of these gnarly issues that we face. That's what this nation needs God's people to do. Needs us to say yes when Jesus says go. Bring this truth. The people need this truth. Um, I'll, I'll give you a challenge. I, I did this experiment and I actually inflicted it on a friend of mine. I have a friend who uh, is very politically involved, uh, much farther to the right than I tend to be, uh, but we are very, very good friends and he's willing to indulge me. So I, I asked him to do this experiment with me. I said, I, take any issue you want, any controversial issue that our nation is facing right now. Doesn't matter which one. And then I want you to take the Gospel of Matthew. I mean, it, it would take too long to have all of Jesus' teachings in one spot, but the Gospel of Matthew comes pretty close. I said, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, 6, and 7 Sit down with your issue. Whatever one, don't even have to tell me which one you pick. You just pick an issue that is facing our nation right now. And sit down with the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, 6, and 7, and throw in 1 Corinthians 13, too. And you tell me what you learn. And we talked a little while later, and he said, I was stunned. I was paralyzed. I, I couldn't do it. I didn't, know, I didn't even know what to do with that. And I said, I understand. It's hard. It's really hard. Especially when we've totally gotten out of the habit and we've been listening to all these other voices and saying, yeah, 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 I think that's right. Yeah, I, th yeah, I like that. And all of a sudden we come back to the core of Jesus' teaching and and... And Jesus says, this is the truth. And you don't even know what to do. But our, our nation on this 4th of July, I have to admit, I'm kind of discouraged. <laughs> because uh, on this birthday of our nation, I think uh, the body of Christ is, is kind of just moving. We're retreating. We're stepping back. We've had a rough year and a half or so, like everybody else. And you can see it. You know, our influence is waning. And what, our, what God's people, what all people need so desperately is the truth that Jesus brought to us, that the Son of God brought to us. And, uh, and we are it. 
We say it every week. We are the followers of Jesus Christ for the sake of the world. That's who we are. And so I'm going to give you the same challenge that I gave my friend. <laughs> and that I've given to me. I'm not pointing fingers at you. The challenge comes to me too. Take any issue. Any issue you want. All of them, I would say, over time. Probably going to take a while. There's a lot. And sit down with this book, the Gospel of Matthew, if you don't know where to start. The Gospel of Matthew, chapters 5, 6, and 7. And take any issue you want and read through that Gospel and ask, pray, ask the Spirit to enlighten you. Lord Jesus, what do we do? What do we do with this as God's people? What do we do with this issue? I'm going to set aside my favorite whoever, commentator, politician, hero, I'm going to set it aside and just listen to you, Lord Jesus. What do we do about this? If you were here with us, as your people, as you look at this issue, what would you do? What should we do? And as you pray, the Holy Spirit will send to you in some way. Count on it. The Holy Spirit will send you in some way. I don't know how that way is going to be. It's probably going to be different for everybody. Um, but it is so vitally important that we go. Because here's the truth. Uh, I said this earlier, and you may not agree with me on this. That's fine. But I don't think God does love nation states. You know? Nation, a nation state is a human invention. We made it up. It's not divine. It's, we made it up. And God has done amazing things through this nation state, this United States, for one reason only. When we have chosen, when we have chosen to do what is right, when we have chosen to be a blessing, when we have chosen to essentially walk in God's will, we are blessed. But when we turn away from that, uh, if we begin to become selfish, if we begin to become um, something that would make Jesus weep, then that blessing will evaporate instantly. Uh, and, and we will see God's blessing going to where the good is, going to where the righteousness is, going to where the justice is. It's very clear in Scripture. This is what God blesses. And when we turn away from that, it's not like God turns away from us. We turn away from God. We turn away from, we turn away from righteousness. We turn away from justice. Uh, we turn away from doing what is right and good in the sight of Jesus Christ. And we turn away from God's blessing. It's pretty clear. So this morning, the challenge is we are being sent the world, our nation on this 4th of July needs God's people to bring the truth, this scriptural truth, to all of these difficult things we face. And we're the only ones that can do it. So I urge you to take up this challenge with me. Go to the scriptures in prayer with the Holy Spirit's leading. And when the Holy Spirit sends you with that truth, go.
and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out everlasting your light will shine when all else fades never ending your glory goes beyond all fame and the cry of my
Will you please pray with me? Oh, good and gracious God, our soul does cry out to you, asking for your forgiveness and your love and your grace and your mercy. Fill us with the Holy Spirit so that we can truly be sent out in your name to build up your kingdom, to share the love and mercy and forgiveness that you give us. We thank you on this Independence Day for the privilege to be here and worship you as we please. Help us to not take that for granted, but to be filled and sent and to go where you want us to go. Lord God, we just thank you for the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that is through this gift of his life that our sins are forgiven. Help us to take that message, that good news, and all that we are and all that we do, every moment of our lives, live for you so people can know there's a difference in our lives and our difference is our faith and love and trust and hope in you. Lord, on this Independence Day, we pray for all those serving the military here and abroad. We pray that you watch over them, that you keep them safe, that we remember and not take this freedom for granted. Lord, we also come before you today with many things on our hearts and minds. You know what they are. You promise to hear our prayers. You tell us to bring these prayers to you, trusting and hoping in you, Lord. We lift up all those we pray for, Lord, now either out loud or silently in our hearts. Lord, we pray that your will be done in the lives that we pray for. We pray that your will be done in our lives as well. All these prayers, Lord, we lift up to you, trusting in your mercy, in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand as you're able. Each time as we gather as God's people, we receive God's grace and forgiveness. And one of those ways is through this holy meal. So we remember in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus had a final meal with his closest friends. And at that meal, he took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it. He gave it to eat, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it all to drink, saying, this cup is a new promise poured out by my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's pray together the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. All are welcome to God's table and to receive God's grace and forgiveness through this holy meal. You don't have to be a member of this congregation or Lutheran. Again, all are welcome to come and partake. We do have gluten-free elements. If you need those, you can ask for those. There will be two stations on the two side aisles. So these two sections come down this side aisle. These two sections come down this side aisle. Uh, you'll come up to Pastor Dave or myself, and we will give you uh, the wafer or the bread. And then you go to the next station where there'll be someone to give you uh, the wine, which is the individual cups of wine, which is the red liquid, or the juice, which is the clear liquid. And then you go to the very far station to put your empty cups and then go back to your seats. But know this, all who are hungry and thirsty, come eat 
and drink. The table is set, and you are welcome. Give us a few moments to get in place, and you can come up as you choose. Good morning. Good morning. God is good all and all the time. Amen. Nothing says 4th of July like a budget update, right? <laughs> so we are 18% low on contributions for the year, which isn't totally unexpected, but it does 
hinder what we can do as far as planning for the fall. So at, at, at this point, if anyone can give an additional contribution, it would be greatly appreciated and help us plan for our programming in the fall. Speaking of programming, <laughs> that's well done. Uh, there are two volunteer positions currently available that are essential to our ministries here at Advent Lutheran Church, uh, one of which is the Bread Run Ministry Coordinator. So this is someone who organizes the monthly volunteer schedule of who is picking up and who is dropping off the bread. Doesn't sound too difficult. If anybody here is interested in that position, please see Linda Herman or talk to a pastor or talk to me, and I will convince you that it's a great idea for you to do it. The other position is the food pantry order pickup volunteer. That is a big title. We, you'll get a card and a shirt with it written on it. It's fantastic. This volunteer helps pick up the food orders at Second Harvest at approximately 8.30 a.m. on Thursday mornings and then helps stock the food pantry. Again, if you're available Thursday mornings, doesn't sound like that big of a deal. I think we can do this. I think we can find two volunteers to fill these spots. If you have any more questions about these positions, again, See Linda, talk to the pastors, talk to me, talk to my wife is now the secretary on council. You can talk to her. <laughs> I just rope her into everything. Um, or you can read the weekly messenger for more information about these positions. That's all I have. Please rise for the blessing. Receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you God's peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
followers of Jesus Christ for the sake of the world. So go in peace and serve the Lord and happy 4th of July. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And we will. I want my life to make a difference. I want my life to make a change. I want my life to do some good here. Thank you.